welcome back to my channel and if you're new here my name is Amanda thank you so much for tuning in let's go ahead and look at the products that we will be using for this abstract tumbler tutorial so you will need a tumbler of your choice I am using a 20 ounce skinny straight from maker flow crafts and you can also use a sublimation tumbler for this if you'd like However, if you are going to be placing epoxy on the tumbler, you will need to sand the smooth, glossy finish off of the sublimation tumbler first, and therefore you may still need to coat it with a thin layer of paint. But basically what we are doing is, um, so the vision that I had in my head when I first started this tumbler was I wanted this real pretty purple glitter on the top and on the bottom and I sort of wanted to leave the middle white and showing through and as I was looking around my craft room I ran across these little butterfly glitter pieces that I had purchased from Maker Flow Crafts and I thought that they would look really pretty in the middle section of this tumbler so what I did was, and I don't have the footage for this part, I don't know, I have found that for some reason, once my camera has recorded a certain amount of hours, it will record over itself, and I believe I recorded over some of the footage of the beginning stages of this tumbler. but what I did was I applied approximately five milliliters of epoxy to the tumbler. I took my finer cut of purple glitter, sprinkled it on the top and took my chunky cut and sprinkled it on the bottom. And I just sort of left the middle open a little bit. I mean, it has a little bit of glitter here and there, but I left the middle open be because again, I wanted the white to show through a little bit when I first started this tumbler. Um, and then after that had cured, I placed a coat of epoxy on top and I believe it was about 20 to 25 milliliters of epoxy. And then while that was curing, that's when I went in with my glitter butterflies. And I will be honest, I just went crazy with them. If you want to spread yours out a little bit more than I did you can do so but I just I love butterflies and um, so I just sort of went crazy with with putting them on the tumbler um, but once I sprinkled them on top of the epoxy I waited just a little bit and then I just gently tapped them down to ensure that I didn't have any sticking out um, and so once that was completed, I let that cure and then I added another coat of epoxy. Now here is where the creative process comes in and the fun part. And, and you can take this idea and make it your own. Um, I am not an artist to the effect of like, I don't, I cannot draw very well and things like that. Um, but I ran across this picture on Google and I just thought it was really, really cool, um, having the cocoon open and have the butterfly in the center. And I knew I wanted to use this little three-dimensional acrylic butterfly already and so I thought let's sort of make a cocoon but I wanted the tumbler to be sort of different colors and sort of to look like it had texture so I'm going to show you an easy way to bring texture to your tumblers and um, still be able to see the glitter and the butterflies underneath the dimension. 
So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so in order to get started with this project, I'm just taking this green vinyl. I'm not sure what brand or what kind it is, um, but I'm just going to use it for a mask, so to speak, because I want the paint and the texture to be everywhere except the very center of the tumbler, which is where I'm placing my vinyl decal as well as my 3D acrylic butterfly. So what I'm going to do is just based on the picture that I saw on Google, I'm just making a um, random shape, if you will, out of the vinyl using my craft knife. You can do this however you'd like if you have a die cut machine and you want to do that. I didn't see the necessity of turning my die cut machine on, going into the software, creating this shape when I really wanted it to be sort of random and fluid in, in movement um, and, and not perfect. So I'm just going to go ahead and place this on the tumbler so that we can begin the three-dimensional process. I do recommend that you use a stencil vinyl or a removable vinyl. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not sure what brand or kind this vinyl is, but apparently it was a more of a permanent vinyl because it did um, leave a little bit of a sticky residue when I removed the vinyl. So I had to take an alcohol wipe and just sort of wipe that off. So just be aware of that. Please do use a stencil vinyl or a removable vinyl for this process. Also, make sure that your vinyl is adhered really well to the tumbler. Press down the edges, push out any bubbles with a scraper tool because we are going to be hydro dipping this tumbler to create our three-dimensional sort of look. Um, and if the vinyl is not adhered really well to the tumbler, then your ink is going to seep up underneath and it may look okay, but it, you know, if you're wanting one section that is not painted with the ink, then that's not going to occur if it seeps underneath the vinyl. So I hope that makes sense, but make sure your vinyl is adhered really well to your tumbler. Okay, these are the colors we will be using today. I know it's sort of hard to see on camera right at the moment. However, I will have them listed and linked for you in the description box below. But I purchased these from Makerflow Crafts, and I have posted another video in the past of the hydro dipping process. I will link that for you as well. If you have not seen that, go check that out. But I have found that warm water works a little better than cold water. Um, I still sometimes have an issue with the ink wanting to clump together. Um, so it, it's all sort of trial and error and practice. And I'm by no means an expert, but for this process, as we mentioned many times, I do want some dimension. I want um, some clumps of paint. I want some striations. I want there to be sort of movement and color and so... For me, it turned out how I envisioned it in my head and also based upon the picture. Again, if you take a look at the picture, that was my inspiration. You can see it almost looks like ribbons in the cocoon and some are raised and some are indented. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into the actual hydro dipping process. Okay, so I usually use a large 
like storage tote, clear storage tote. And I usually line it with a garbage bag just to keep, you know, just to prevent it from staining too, too much and maybe having transfer ink or paint. I don't know. I've called it ink. I've called it paint. But um, I couldn't find that tote. <laughs> I'm not sure, you know, it's one of those things where when you clean up your craft room, well, then you can't find anything. So that was the case. So I'm just using an old pot that I don't use for cooking any longer. And I'm just using that. However, I did not add enough water to it as it was not, you know, deep enough for me to submerge as much of the tumbler as I wanted to. So keep that in mind when doing this. Be sure to have a deep enough and wide enough container for whatever item you're going to be hydro dipping. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to start off with the color that you want to be the most dominant and just sprinkle, you know, four to five drops and then follow that up with your other colors. Now, again, you know, I do this different ways, different times, depending on sort of the outcome that I want. But, you know, if you swirl it around with a toothpick pretty quickly, then it, it won't really clump and stick together. But if it sits for any length of time, I've found that it will clump together. Um, another thing that I have done before is sort of taken like, a straw and just gently blew through the straw into the ink and water or paint and water. I need to look and see if it's ink or paint. I think it's paint. Um, but anyway, and that will sort of cause movement in the paint and the water. And that will sort of also give you a really cool effect. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip my tumbler once. I will dry it off gently as to not, you know, move or transfer any of the paint. And then I will dip it a second time. And I'm just going to gently rub off what I don't want as far as the paint that I don't want, if it's in a spot that I don't want it, I'm just going to gently rub that off while it's still wet. And then once I get it how I would like for it to be, then as I mentioned, I'll gently dry it off and dip it a second time. I love hydro dipping, as I mentioned before. Um, it's sort of trial and error, but I have hydro dipped numerous things, um, canvas, wood. It's really fun. Um, I have hydro dipped ink pens. So if you want to see any of those videos, let me know. But um, it's really a cool process, especially with these paints. Um, I know people have hydro dipped with like spray paint before, and it's really cool. But I love using these it's Easy Marble Marabou paints. They are just really, really cool. So go check those out on Maker Flow Crafts if you haven't already. And I don't have any kind of affiliation with Maker Flow Crafts. So this is strictly just my personal opinion on the product. I love them. And I actually wound up dipping it a third time with just one color. And I'm just twisting the tumbler around into the color to sort of get it in sort of like a swirl pattern around the tumbler. And also I'm tilting my pot because as I mentioned before, I didn't have enough water and I don't know why I didn't think to just add more water, but um, you know, that's just me, how my brain works. I get involved in what I'm doing and I don't think about obvious other things, but anyway, Okay, so this is the bottom of the tumbler, and now I'm just going to take a paper towel and gently tap off the excess water. 
I usually do take my heat gun and just a quick second take the heat to it as well just to sort of I don't know I guess more for my peace of mind than anything just to kind of set the paint and finish drying the tumbler and look at the dimension that you get like it looks like a wrinkled piece of paper or you know something like that like it really gives dimension and yet under this green color you can still see the butterflies and the glitter so I loved how it turned out and before I remove the vinyl I'm just going to take a white acrylic marker and trace along the edge of the vinyl shape so that that can establish the opening for our cocoon. Okay, once I had the cocoon opening traced and I removed the vinyl, I went ahead and got some alcohol ink and I, I just poured a little bit in these measuring cups and used a water paint pen and just traced along on the white acrylic marker area. And you can do this or not. I mean, you can leave it white. You don't have to trace it at all. Um, I just, I, I felt like I needed a little bit more definition. I didn't like the white just being so plain. So I added different colors again to add a little bit more dimension and interest. And then I did that several different times um, until I got it how I felt like I wanted it. And then I did go ahead and add another coat of epoxy. Once my epoxy had cured, then I was ready for my decal.
can use, you can do an offset to your decal if you want and have two or three different layers of, of vinyl. Um, for me, for this tumbler, I just wanted one layer, simple beauty is within. And um, in this holographic vinyl. So that's just my preference. And so that's what I did. And then I did go ahead and get my white acrylic marker again. And I just sort of randomly picked some paint spots and ran my marker either alongside of it or inside the painted area, just to sort of define those painted areas. And you know, again, to sort of make some sort of marks along the rest of the tumbler, sort of like in our cocoon picture, where it has like the little lines in, in the cocoon. Um, so that was sort of my thought on that. And then once that was done, I added another coat of epoxy and about 30 to 45 minutes into the curing process, is when I stuck on my acrylic butterfly. And once that had cured, I did go ahead and apply a little bit of UV resin behind the butterfly, cured that with my UV lamp. And so it is nice and secure. And then we're going to make a little butterfly straw topper. So what I did for this is I cut a piece of black acrylic with my laser engraver and I sanded it down, glittered it, and then applied some epoxy over top of the glitter. And then I made this little straw topper out of a straw topper silicone mold that I have and I just um, attached them with a fast curing epoxy. And so that is, that is it. Now, um, something that I don't talk about enough and I need to, that is protective equipment when you're working with epoxy resin that is sanding your tumblers and you know i don't mention those and stress those enough but if you see right here i'm showing you that once i had my glitter on and my first coat of epoxy I did go ahead and sand down the rim to establish that fine line of stainless steel for the epoxy to adhere to. Also for the gloves that I use when I'm working with epoxy resin, I really like the nitrile gloves more than the latex. Um, I can, I get these from Amazon and, um, they're really good gloves in my opinion. I like these a lot. And then I also use a respirator. So very important. Just a few things there that I feel like I don't stress enough or talk about enough. And I really should. But I, I hope this has inspired you in some way. Um, you know, everyone's different. Not everyone is going to like this tumbler, and that is fine. Um, if you have watched my channel enough, you know that I am a little different in my creations. You know, I don't really like cookie cutter designs. I mean, that's just me. I, I like to try to be a little bit different and come up with unique and creative ideas. They don't always work out and that's okay. <laughs> but um, the point is inspiration. If you can get an idea from this tutorial and make it your own and create something fabulous, then that makes me happy. If you like this video, that makes me super happy. Um, 
But regardless, I appreciate everyone's time and attention to my video. Again, as I've mentioned before in the past, time is precious and I know everyone is so busy these days. And so if you're taking the time to watch my videos, please know that it is truly, truly appreciated. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to do so. Make sure you click on the bell for notifications so you don't miss when I do post a video. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up so that it will be pushed out to more and more viewers. And as always, if you have any questions, leave those below. I'll be glad to answer any questions that I can. And I hope everyone has a blessed day.